Hey, I'm finally live on uh, uh, AJV uh, Global Channel as well. Uh, so anyway, a quick hello to everybody on the AJV Global Channel. I already started the session uh, quite some time ago, uh, and uh, I am already live on uh, AJV Global Facebook uh, page. I'm live on Instagram. I'm live on my channel on YouTube called Arun Jacob, and uh, I'm finally live also on the AJV Global channel. Uh, uh channel uh and hopefully my team will confirm that now uh team if you can confirm that so okay so quick uh, uh update here for uh the ajb global channel people who just came on board uh, uh i was giving an update about the covid 19 uh, situation here in new zealand we've had six to seven new cases of covid 19 bringing the total number of cases uh, in the country to 1106 but the good news is that it is leveling off. That's what was told to us uh, by our senior government officials. Uh, there were 39 new confirmed cases and 28 probables announced today. Uh, there are 13 people in hospital, including three in the ICU, uh, out of whom one is critical. And so far, and, and also, you know, two people have been discharged from the hospital and we have not had any additional deaths. And so the death toll uh, from uh, this very unfortunate visit stays at one in New Zealand. And the word that comes to my mind uh, is that uh, it is positive and it looks like the lockdown that we have effected here in, the, in our country is really working. So that's the way it is. So that was pretty much the catch up I did with uh, everybody. And uh, yeah, so that that's where we are, right? So I'm now going to flick back to my uh, channel where uh, the uh, Facebook uh, page uh, of uh, AGB Global, and some people have already joined in. Uh, and team, hey, look, uh, just confirmed that I've, I'm live on our uh, uh, YouTube of AGB Global as well, uh, so that you know we don't have that recurring problem uh, like before. Okay, so O'Neill Pandit, our good friend and um, AGB uh, client, uh, uh, as always, one of the first to join in, and it says, uh, hi, Arun, hope all well. Great to see you, always uh, positive. Thanks, Vanil. Uh, last uh, last week when I came live uh, on uh, on on Facebook and uh, YouTube, one of the comments which my team did not paste to me was, I think, from YouTube, and uh, this guy was uh, sounding a little accusatory, uh, and he said the whole world is suffering from uh, COVID nineteen, but you, Mr. Jacob, you are still uh, busy trying to sell your business to the world. Uh, so you know, so, you know that sort of uh, tone is. Uh, what he was using. Thankfully, he was not abusive. He just uh, seemed to indicate that I was more interested in uh, running my business, uh, even in the midst of this, uh, you know, global pandemic. And my response to that, you know, and to build on what uh, O'Neill uh, has said is the anyway the world is, you know, all looking at each other and saying, oh, is this the end of the world? Is this all, uh, you know, doom and gloom and that sort of thing. So it's important for some of us to stay positive. And that is what it is. Is it easy for me as a business owner? Is it easy for, for me as uh, uh, somebody responsible for the lives of 40 people who work for my company? Is it easy for me as a father of three children and as a husband and as a brother and so many other things? It is not. So either I have two options. I can either sit back and say glumly saying, oh, my God, this is the end of the world. How do I deal with this? Or we can be positive because this is not the first time that uh, humanity has fought uh, something like this. It, we've, we, we've had two world wars in the past. We had the Cold War. We had the uh, Spanish flu. We had the plague. We had bubonic plague. We had the AIDS uh, coming on to us in, in the 80s. And humanity, I think, by and large, is very resilient. And uh, But I think a majority of human beings also tend to look at the negative, So which is... All the more reason it is important for thought leaders, for business leaders, for family leaders to be able to maintain that positive uh, approach. Because I know as, as a guy who's lived half a century of my life that this too shall pass. And once it passes, those guys, uh, those, you know, those organizations, those groups of people, those teams, those families, which have stayed positive, are the ones who are going to come out stronger at the other end of the pipe. So guys, yeah, as much as I... I uh, would also like to, you know, uh, put uh, ash on my forehead and sit and, uh, you know, act like it is all doom and gloom. I don't have the uh, uh, option of doing that because I've got to keep all of us motivated. And that includes my team, myself, my clients, uh, because there's so many of us who look to me for that leadership uh, of, you know, ensuring that uh, 
everything is going to be all right. And I promise you it is going to be all right. Not only because I feel it internal, inside my body and my, my soul, but I know that these things have a cyclical way of coming in and try to throw a spanner in the works, but then eventually uh, humanity will rise up again and you know move on. So thanks, uh, O'Neill, for uh, telling me that um, I stay positive. Like I said, yeah, it's not only a trait, personality trait of mine, but I think it's also one of my leadership qualities that I keep, you know, ensuring that uh, because in six, seven, eight, nine, ten months, twelve months, worst case scenario. New Zealand will open its borders again and more people would like to come into this beautiful country and we should be continuously sending out positive affirmations that everything is uh, going to be just fine and that New Zealand was probably a much better place to be in than any other place or not when there is the next pandemic that comes along. All right, cool. Okay. Um, Deep Arsh. Uh, okay, guys, uh, some of you guys uh, who are going to ask me questions uh, will have to uh please leave your number or confirm that you are an AGB student uh, because then it'll help you to modulate my answers because you know we we, we would like you to get uh uh your contact number so that after this live session is over then you know we can get in touch and have more detailed interactions okay now before i move on to the next uh, phase of uh, uh our um, uh, session, uh, which is I'm going to move into the q and I'm going to quickly talk about the ARA Institute of Canterbury, uh, which is uh, based in Christchurch. Uh, so ARA Institute of Canterbury. Uh, so every week uh, when myself or one of my colleagues uh, and fellow licensed immigration advisors uh, is coming live uh, uh, through all these different platforms, uh, we are trying to pick one institution from New Zealand and talk about it. Not so much just reading out what is on their websites, but also giving our uh, personal opinion and you know a little bit of research that we have done, which most of you may not be aware of. So let me talk today about the ARA Institute of Canterbury. ARA, by the way, the word itself is a Maori word. Uh, it means the way uh, or the path. Uh, so, you know, te ara means the way. So ara stands for path, you know, like a, a, a road or a path on which you get onto for a brighter future. Earlier, this, uh, institution used to be called Christchurch Polytechnic Institute of Technology. So that's what it was called. It was very popularly called as uh, CPIT, which was the short form for Christchurch, Polyte uh, Christchurch Polytechnic Institute of uh, Technology. And CPIT was is something that still comes very quickly to my uh, uh, reference as well when I'm talking about uh, the current uh, institution called ARA. So CPIT changed, uh, kind of rebranded itself and uh, just like uh, quite a few other institutions across New Zealand, uh, uh, they sort of rebranded to make them more uh, relevant uh, to not only international students, but also the domestic students who they were catering to. So there were a few of them rebranded. And so Christchurch uh, Polytechnic Institute of Technology became ARA, in Christ Institute of Christchurch. Uh, it's been there for a very long time, like most of the uh, institutes of technology in New Zealand. Um, ARA is also owned and operated by the government of New Zealand. Uh, I've had a very long, uh, I personally and my, the rest of my team, we've had a very long interaction uh, and uh, experience working with uh, ARA now and CPIT in the past. They have an excellent team of people uh, who are uh, working to make the best uh, uh, give the best outcomes to their domestic as well as their international students. Uh, some of the courses that stand out in my mind straight away uh, from ARA, they have very good uh, courses in information technology, engineering, uh, business, of course. Uh, but two uh, courses that stand out in my mind from ARA, uh, there is a fantastic course in uh, computer-aided design, uh, which is CAD CAM uh, and computer-aided manufacturing. So. That stands out to me. Uh, they have a very good course also in quantity surveying, and then they also have a very good course uh, in medical uh, laboratory uh, technology. And so these are all very highly skilled uh, uh, courses and pathways. And I remember a lot of my students who have been to this particular uh, institution and have passed out of C you know, uh, the old CPIT and the present are, are all very well settled. Uh, in news in uh, Christchurch and other parts of New Zealand, uh, and I was in Christchurch recently. For those of you uh, who follow some of my work, and you know, check out uh, our uh, over Facebook and you know YouTube updates. Uh, I was in Christchurch recently, guys. The city is looking amazing. Uh, there was that very unfortunate incident of uh, 
an earthquake in Christchurch uh, where, you know, there were a few fatalities. Uh, and so uh, the government decided that a lot of these uh, buildings were not, uh, uh, you know, earthquake, you know, uh, well equipped to uh, handle an earthquake scenario. So a lot of the city center was demolished and a brand new city has been built uh, in Christchurch. And it is stunning to be there in the middle of that uh, uh, city. And uh, ARA campus is bang in the middle of that uh, uh, beautiful new city uh, center as well. Uh, fantastic institution, quite large actually. Uh, and, uh, you know, of course now it is also going to come under the umbrella of the new, uh, uh, you know, uh, umbrella organization they're creating for all institutes of technology and polytechnic, but amazing uh, uh, outcomes for our students thus far. We've always had a great working relationship with ARA and I would strongly, strongly advise anybody uh, who is con considering to go to ARA and to Christchurch, please go for it. You have nothing to worry about and we will of course put all the options in front of you and be there for you before and after you reach New Zealand. So, all right, so big thumbs up to ARA, go for it, study there, excellent rating, uh, good outcomes for students and a very friendly uh, team of people who will also assist you when you come into New Zealand uh, uh, and to ARA specifically as an international student. So, yeah, so that, that's my uh, two bits about ARA and we shall now move on and check to see uh, who has been asking me questions. Deep Arsh has asked me a question, but Deep has not, uh, shared his number, nor has he mentioned whether he is one of uh, our AJV students. So Deep, unfortunately, I'll have to uh, skip your question and move on. If you want me to answer that question, please come back and leave your uh, number and I will definitely, definitely answer your question. Uh, then we are going to Jitin uh, Prasad. Jitin says, hello, Arun, my name is Jitin. I'm an AJV client. Hey, Jitin, fantastic and always, uh, Pleasure to say hello to our AJV uh, clients uh, and students. Uh, I am uh, an AJV client, wanted to know for how long are we student allowed to work full-time in healthcare sector as government allowed? So, okay, so what uh, the government did, Jitin, is because this is a, a health crisis uh, and for those who are working in essential services like the health sector and in supermarkets and you know those kinds of places, the government has now said that you know they are going to uh, ease the uh, number of hours that students can work, and they're pretty much you know basically giving you the full work work rights. How long will it last? I don't know uh, because how long it will last will depend on how long this uh, you know situation lasts in New Zealand. I, I think that is you know a common. Uh, uh, logic uh, you know, for all of us to understand, but I think it will last for a few months at least because uh, not only will the government want to uh, uh, address the current situation with the current cases, but also ensure that you know going forward there is no outbreak of this once again uh, because you know some scientists are saying that uh, the uh, vaccine, if at all uh, it's going to be developed, uh, uh, you know anytime in the near future, might be only in early 2021. So I think uh, health sector workers would be pretty high in demand. So I think the government would be quite uh, lenient and let you work. And so the only thing is, uh, like I said, when how long will it last? Nobody knows. Just like how long none of us know how uh, the, uh, uh, just like none of us know how long the lockdown is going to last. Uh, but I think, uh, yeah, that it's only a matter of time before uh, the government is working uh, towards uh, easing and making the situation normal. What I like about, uh, you know, the being in New Zealand right now is it all seems to be moving well according to plan and the cases have already leveled off. So and I have been saying this from day one when this crisis hit us. If anybody is going to come out of uh, this crisis faster and better than in most of the countries, I think New Zealand will be right on top of that pile. All right, cool. All right, Yuvraj Mida says, hi, Arun. Uh, just to say you a quick hello, take care, stay home, stay safe. <laughs> okay, uh, hey, Yuvraj, I just emailed you, by the way, because I was going through some of my uh, emails and um, I, I did uh, remember that we exchanged a few emails. Uh, good to say hello to you as well, Yuvraj. We are all doing very well here. Thank you very much. And I hope, uh, you know, you are also doing well in India. Uh, and, you know, maybe after this, uh, session, you know, we guys can catch up and have a bit of a chat. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Vignesh Surinarayan says, good singer. Harun, what else do I do, Vignesh, when my uh, YouTube freezes up and I'll have to try and uh, 
that was a Beatles song by the way that I was humming. So yeah, I, I kind of grew up on the Beatles uh, and also a lot of old Hindi songs and stuff like that. So yeah, uh, right. Uh, Samali Petra Perez, can I give my can my can I my wife get work visa and I go to a level seven? Uh, seven. I mean, uh, again, Samali, I have not uh, mentioned if you are an AJB client, but okay, it's a reasonably simple um, question. So. You will be able to ask for a spouse work visa if you're going for a level seven, but it is a bachelor's, uh, not anything else. You know, if you're going, for instance, a graduate diploma at level seven, your spouse will not be allowed to come on a work visa. But yeah, he or she uh, could most definitely apply for a visitor visa. Why don't you uh, give us a call and check with us and uh, uh, we will assist you further. Get in touch with us, uh, Somali Perez. Uh, Looks like a very Sri Lankan name to me. Uh, so just sharing it to both the screens, to Instagram as well as. So Samali, why don't you, you know, uh, give us a call if you're, I don't know if you're in India. If you're in India, call that uh, toll-free number. If you're in New Zealand, call this toll-free number. But it looks like from your, um, uh, just your question, it looks like you're still not in New Zealand. Uh, and you sound like somebody from Sri Lanka. So. Why don't you just send an email uh, with your uh, contact details uh, and or, you know, or ping me, uh, inbox me and uh, we will get in touch with you and discuss more details and give you some advice. All right. Yeah. But be clear about what what can get your spouse a work visa uh, or a visitor visa. And also it's important to before you go ahead and uh, start your entire uh, uh, process to get a good, honest opinion from a professional company like AJV. Uh, which has got five, not one, not two, not three. I know I probably am sounding like a TV sales guy, but not one, not two, not three, but we have five licensed immigration advisors in our company. And so what we do with our clients is, you know, somebody like you who's not even sure what level to choose. Uh, so we advise from day one, what exactly uh, uh, is the courses that you need to look at, whether you're eligible. And we, not only that, we also check to see uh, uh, that, uh, you know, to, to ensure that our students and the spouses can catch up here in New Zealand again. So we are not, uh, you know, looking only at the student. We look at you and your spouse as a complete unit. And we also do an assessment from a licensed immigration advisor to check that there is adequate proof to be able to file a partnership based, work, you know, work visa or visitor visa as well. So Samali, I think it is very, very important for you that you get in touch with us else. A lot of these agencies uh, who don't have licensed immigration advisors will sell you uh, uh, a dream saying, oh, you know what, you go to this course, don't worry, uh, your wife can join you on work visa. And then after you get the student visa, you will realize that actually it was not true. And at that time, they will stop taking your calls and they will say, oh, but we never told you that. But, you know, talk to somebody like us with you know, five licensed immigration advisors and we will uh, give you the best possible uh, uh, advice. All right, Somali. Okay. Say I'm being nice to you, but although you didn't share your number, I'm still giving you so much information because I'm concerned for you. That's why. Yeah. Gigi Velapali asks, I'm AJV client. I want to know next intakes in uh, New Zealand. Hey, Gigi. Always a pleasure to say hello to my clients. I think we are going to uh, go ahead uh, with uh, the intakes as advertised. I personally think the July intake might get pushed behind by a month or two. That is my personal opinion. I'm not basing this on any official uh, information, but I have been speaking to my friends in the industry and by friends, I mean international marketing managers and senior directors of various institutions and checking with them to see you know, when is it likely. And by and large, most of them are also saying exactly what I'm saying, which is, you know, we are not sure at this stage uh, when this, but I, I think uh, the way the cases are leveling off in New Zealand uh, of COVID-19. Uh, I think uh, we should be able to control it. Uh, I also feel that they might introduce some sort of element of, uh, you know, uh, isolation for a few days once an international student comes in, just to make sure that once we've controlled it inside New Zealand, that any international students coming in from different countries don't carry it and start spreading it uh, all over again. So I believe they might do what they did just before the lockdown occurred here, where the students were being asked to isolate for 14 days. Uh, so I have a feeling 
that's what they're going to do. I, I'm, I'm also getting regular emails from uh, quite a few uh, institutions, and they all seem to be uh, sending emails saying, oh, this is our July intake, this is our orienta orientation date, and I'm like quite happy to get those emails because it looks like nobody is panicking or nobody is uh, putting their shutters down and saying, hey, look, you know, uh, we don't know when we're going to open our call. So everybody is acting and behaving like normal. So I'd say, Gigi, you know, just uh, continue with your process uh, just the way it is. Worst case scenario, I think it might get pushed behind by a month or two. You've got to bear in mind that international students are a massive, huge uh, uh, revenue earner for New Zealand. Unlike tourists who may, tourism is another big revenue earner for us. So unlike tourists, tourists uh, who will not uh, agree to self-isolate after coming into New Zealand, international students will because they are coming here for one year of study plus one, two or three years of post-study work. With us. So they are in it for the longer game. And I'm sure international students will say, OK, yeah, hey, look, uh, you're going to let me into the country, but you want me to isolate myself for a week or two weeks. I'm sure a lot of international students will do that. And I think the government will also look at international students to come in because you will then start bringing that very uh, much needed revenue that we are going to lose out on if we keep uh, you know, uh, pushing back the uh, intake date. So that's my personal view. Again, not spoken because uh, uh, I am in the business of attracting international students into New Zealand and you know migrants, but I'm saying it because you know, that's my gut feel at this stage and that's what i think a government should do and ought to do control the virus here in new zealand open the borders again even if it's in a you know controlled manner let the international students come in because they will bring in the revenue if required put them in isolation for a week or 10 days or a couple of weeks and then let them out into regular society so i'd say gg just uh, continue with uh, your planning as always i think the intakes will be the same as what were advertised which is july Worst case scenario, if it does get pushed behind, maybe a couple of months behind. All right, cool. Clayton Dyes says, hey, Aaron, this is Clayton Dyes, a JV student. Got an offer letter for the July intake, which I've signed up for. When should we pay for the course fees? Should it be after obtaining the week? So yeah, pretty much, Clayton. I'm surprised you're asking me this question. I'm sure your AGV advisor would have already Told you the uh, the sequence of what happens. Uh, so yeah, go ahead and apply for your uh, student visa. And once you apply for your student visa, we after the uh, visa officer assesses your application, uh, and uh, then you know is satisfied and says, "Hey, look, everything is good with this particular application." They then give you something called approval in principle or AIP. Once you get that AIP, is when you need to pay the fees, which is like almost the visa in your hand, except for that one more formality of paying the fees uh, to the institution into their trust account, not directly to the institution. Each institution has got something called a trust account. So the money goes into the trust account uh, for your protection mainly. Uh, uh, and then once uh, all the enrollment formalities are clear, completed, cleared, and then you come in to the country and, and you know start your course, that's when the trust account money would then move into the um, institution's money. So there are a lot of nice checks and balances. So you've got to pay your fee only after the approval in principle and not before that Clayton. So you need more details, talk to your AGB advisor. I'm sure they already shared it with you, but if you wanted to hear it from me, that's, that's the way it works. All right. Yeah, cool. Okay. Somebody wants me to talk about asylum seeking in uh, New Zealand. Uh, uh, so, okay. Look, you know, I can talk about it, but I prefer not to because that's one area of immigration law that I have not completely specialized in. So I would rather not uh, talk about asylum seekers. Yes, we have a, 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 an open system. I mean, a, no, I won't say open system, but we do have a system of, uh, you know, uh, processing asylum seekers, but I may not be the right person to speak about it. So I'll, I'll pass that question. Right, so there is a question. Uh, I'm just going on uh, once I cut that. Uh, right, Argyadatta, what's the condition of IT market now in Auckland? Any job losses are reported? Argya, I think uh, in reality, I think uh, job losses will be there. Uh, let me not uh, uh, say there will not be uh, job losses. 
But I think IT is like one of those sectors uh, which is beautifully um, uh, meant to be done online. Uh, all you require is a good computer and uh, uh, be connected and still be able to design, code, test, uh, whatever. So realistically, there will be a hit. Uh, there's no two ways about it uh, because companies will have to uh, uh, find the revenues to be able to continue to hold on to uh, the uh, employees. So I think there will be a hit for sure. Uh, but at this stage, I don't have the statistics to see if there has already been any job losses in the IT sector. But I think that one of the sectors that's going to bounce back very quickly after this whole thing is over is going to be IT. Uh, because like I said, for various reasons, because IT is a backbone to pretty much everything else that we do in the world today. Uh, any other business, I mean, my entire company, although uh, technically we are in the legal industry because we provide immigration uh, information and stuff. So, But even the legal industry runs on the backbone of IT. So I think IT would, is kind of protected uh, by itself. Uh, so I think it will not uh, uh, take too long for to bounce off. But right now, Agya, I haven't seen any news, but potentially there is. I, I keep following the uh, newsletters uh, from the New Zealand Technology Association. So far, nothing. Uh, and they're only talking about how IT should be used to track the spread of the virus. And today, somebody, one gentleman from Hamilton, actually, uh, from a company uh, called Houston Technology Group. They've come out with an app, uh, which you know will help us to trace the, the, the way this virus is spreading and stuff. So at this stage, no uh, yeah, you know, uh, disconcerting news about job losses, but realistically, I think there will be some job losses, all right? But uh, hey, hey, look, if you're one of those guys uh, who is really good at, with your IT subject, I think, again, you'll be, highly valued because once we start bouncing back, I bet the government will throw a lot of money at the IT sector as well, because IT sector is also one of our uh, future growth, uh, identified future growth areas. And I'm sure they would want to uh, grow it very, very quickly because things like tourism might take some time to grow because it has to be all nice and clean, but IT can grow and all we need is good skilled workers like yourself. Uh, yeah, and you know, uh, that's, that's the reason I'm very confident and positive about the IT sector. I'm also very confident about the international education sector because as I told you, the tourists might uh, do a few dramas about coming back to uh, New Zealand, but I think international students would willingly come in and they know they're here for the long haul. Uh, and because of that, I think they will uh, be willing to do take a small sacrifice of a week or two weeks of isolation and then get back into the mainstream, right? Eric uh, says, I'm an AJB student. My course at NMIT has been deferred to July 2020, and the college has written us to pay the fee in order for the visa to be processed. I believe that the fees are only to be paid once the AIP is received. Uh, how should I respond to NMIT? Okay, what I suggest, uh, uh, Eric, is it's a good question uh, because, you know, obviously only you need to pay the uh, uh, fee only after you receive the AIP. Very good question. And I don't know why NMIT wrote you directly without uh, putting us in the loop. Could you please uh, forward that email uh, to director at ajvglobal.com and I will take it up at a senior level asking them why they are ask, uh, you know, uh, asking you to pay the fee and hold on to that seat. And let's, let's get some clarity from them. Uh, maybe it's part of their strategy, but uh, without AIP, asking to pay fees is not part of the way uh, the uh, sequence of things is supposed to occur. So please forward that email you received, Eric, to director at ajvglobal.com, uh, and we will take a look at it and also interact with NMIT at a senior level and come back to you with a clarification. Okay, Eric, so don't pay the fee right now, just forward that email to us, and we will take a look at it and see how we can now, uh, yeah. Gigi says, I plan to apply next intake. How many months before I apply on student visa? Gigi, immigration is going to take a little longer because they have also shut down some of their offices and they are quite a lot of, uh, uh, you know, quite a lot of uh, 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 staff has been asked to work from home. They're kind of coming to grips with their own ways of working and overcoming this particular problem at this stage. So the earlier you apply, I think your application will stay at uh, in the front of the queue. 
because once this whole COVID-19 goes away and uh, immigration New Zealand opens its doors for regular business, there's going to be a deluge of applications. So it'll be like a big pile of application on each visa officer's table, I assure you. And I'm sure they're already dreading the day they have to go back to their office tables and see that big pile of uh, applications. I'd say apply early so that you stay in queue because obviously, you know, they will follow the FIFO, which is first in, first out sort of, a, uh, you know, a pro process and practice. So, yeah, I'd say uh, just continue uh, to uh, process your application. Uh, the earlier you can get all your documents into place. And this is another interesting development, which is good. Uh, um, I just remembered one of my colleagues who is a licensed immigration advisor. Uh, so she wrote to uh, somebody senior in immigration department of New Zealand and said, hey, look, some of our clients are not able to get their police uh, certificate and their medical uh, you know, uh, test results uh, because of the lockdown in various countries, including India, from where most of our uh, clients come. So very interesting, but we actually got a response back saying, doesn't matter, just go ahead and apply for these, uh, for the file, for the application, uh, minus these documents, and you should be able to provide them as soon as things kind of come back to normal. So yeah, that, that's uh, INZ's official line at the state, and we have it in writing from them saying that, you know, you can um, go ahead and apply even minus some you know important documents which are actually mandatory uh but uh, hey look you know immigration itself is saying i think they're kind of coming to grips with the fact that they'll have to cope with a large uh, number of applications so they are warning us to put applications into the uh pipeline so please go ahead Gigi. don't wait too long okay for fahad ali do you deal visa applications from pakistan absolutely my friend we have we have proudly uh dealt with uh, some uh of our Pakistani clients already. We've had some excellent success uh, with our uh, clients from Pakistan, some of them already here in New Zealand. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we'd, please get in touch with us. Send us your contact details. Inbox your contact details to me, or you can email it to any of this, and we will pick it up. Uh, so by and large, the email address for people in India is to send it to info at ajvglobal.com, that one there. But if you're not from India and you're elsewhere, just send it to immigration advisor uh, at ajvglobal.com because the uh, emails uh, sent to info at uh, ajvglobal.com tend to go to our Indian team and the ones sent to immigration advisor at ajvglobal.com come to uh, our New Zealand team. And our Indian team pretty much deals with application predominantly from India uh, and for any non Indian applications and inquiries our new zealand team steps in because sometimes the the rules of processing are a little different especially for pakistan uh, and which is why we like our team in new zealand to look after it uh, and uh, the indian applications are all looked after by our wonderful team that is based in india so because you're from pakistan please send uh, your details uh, or in a cv and everything else to immigration advisor at ajvglobal.com and one of our team members from New Zealand or Malaysia will get in touch with you. All right, cool. Radio. I have a question from Smita, but she doesn't say if, if she is uh, an AGB client or uh, or she is or a student. So I have to skip that. Nor has she shared her number, so I'll have to skip that one, Smita. If you want us to. Answer, please confirm if you're an AGV uh, student. Uh, if you're not an AGV student, then please share your number because that's our uh, you know, give and take. We want to give you information, but in return, we should at least have the ability to talk to you later and see if we can convert you into a client. So, you know, yeah. <clears throat> I'm gonna quickly check to see I'm not skipping anything from my team. <laughs> okay, there's an interesting question from Chidambara uh, Tanu. Um, where is that? Let me. Okay, so I'm going to jump some of these questions and move to one. 
called Chid from uh, Chidambara Thanu, uh, who is uh, uh, asked a question, uh, says, hi, I am Chidambara Thanu. Uh, I am an AGV client. I am fantastic, Chidambara. Uh, is there any weight subsidy for unemployed international students? Uh, uh, and, you know, I know, Chidambara, that you are actually uh, 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 your spouse is, you know, one of our uh, clients. So, yeah. Okay, good question, uh, Chidambara. Unfortunately, there will not be any subsidy, weight subsidy to uh, unemployed international students. Uh, if the international student was employed at the time this whole crisis hit us and the government declared uh, wage subsidy and, you know, and we are able to take that and give it to our employees. But if she or if an uh, international student was unemployed at that uh, point in time, unfortunately, he or she will not be eligible for wage subsidy. The important reason, uh, reasoning you got to understand behind this is that when an international student applies for uh, uh, you know, student visa, what do they declare? They declare that as far as finances are concerned, they have enough money to pay for their fees and enough money to cover for their living expenses of $15,000 during the year that they are still a student or two years or three years, depending on how long the course is. So because they declare officially and legally that they have living expenses, that's what the government would expect an unemployed international student to use now because you have declared that you had $15,000 at the start per year at the start of your visa application. If you were working and the employer has uh, taken the wage subsidy, then he or she uh, can get subsidized. But if it was unemployed, well, unfortunately, you will have to fall back on your living expenses, which you declared before you came into New Zealand saying, I have this money which I will use towards my living expenses. And this is the time. Uh, if you're unemployed, where you need to dig into your living expenses and continue to live normally till uh, this whole crisis goes away. All right, cool. All right, next, moving on, Pubudu Ishara. Hi, can we get work visa for my wife if I follow level seven course? Pubudu, just answer that question. Only if you're doing a three years uh, uh, bachelor's, then your wife can get a work visa, but otherwise she might have to look at a visitor visa and wait for you to complete your course and then uh, apply for a work visa because then you would have moved into a post-study work visa. But just for a level, one year level seven course, if it is not a, a bachelor's, uh, you know, I don't, you will not, you will not get a work visa for your spouse because you've shared your number. One of our team members called Shereen will get in touch with you and we will uh, give you more information about it. So look out for a call from Shereen uh, uh, Pubudu. All right, cool. Rashpal Sidhu, July intake possible or not, sir? Uh, Rashpal, I just answered that if you go back. Uh, I think uh, July may not happen, but I think it, it might get deferred by one or two months. So I already answered that question, Rashpal. Just rewind this a little bit, uh, go back a little bit, or I don't know if you can do it in a live setting, but after after I finish the session, it will become a video answered there. So just go back uh, uh, and uh, listen to it, and you should be able to get it right. Akash Gupta says, I got my New Zealand visa for July intake. Could you please guide me what to do now, Akash? Uh, if you, I don't know if you're one of our clients. If you're one of our clients, we would have already told you what you have to do. But if you're not a, one of our clients, I think you have to check with the, the company that helped you to get the visa, and uh, I'm sure they should be able to help you. Okay. If you were our client, we would have, you know, generally given you. And if I can, I don't know if anybody can confirm to me. Um, Right. So, Akash, I would say please go back to your uh, agency and uh, I'm sure they should be able to help you. Unfortunately, a lot of you guys come and ask us questions uh, when you're not working with us. And, you know, uh, so it's it's a little embarrassing to say, look, we can't answer you. But uh, hey, as I keep saying, this forum is mainly for AJV clients. And uh, for us, non-AJV students are a very uh, far second priority. So, you know, unfortunately, uh, that's the way it is, and uh, for we are here to look after AJV clients like O'Neill Pandit, uh, who comes back to say AJV is the best study pathway, and uh, happy to have worked with AJV team. Thanks, O'Neill. Uh, see, that's that's see, O'Neill gets immediate priority because he's our client. So, yeah, sorry, Akash, but just go back to your company and they should be able to help you. Okay. Ankit Mittal, hello. How can I get into New Zealand for work? Okay, Ankit, again, you have not shared your number. Um, 
please share your number or also go to my and he <laughs> please Ankit goes on to compliment me for my presentation skills. Thanks, Ankit. Uh, appreciate that um, uh, you know feedback that I have good presentation skills. Well, I'm glad uh, I have them. But go to my video uh, channel, my YouTube channel, and search for a video which says, "Can I find a job in New Zealand and get a work visa?" Something like that. That's what it says. It's one of the most viewed uh, videos on my channel, by the way. And it tells you clearly why trying to find work in New Zealand may not be easy when you're not present in the countries and what you can do to be able to do that. But the other thing you can do, Ankit, is email uh, uh, inbox or email your uh, uh, contact number to us and uh, we will have one of our advisors call you and give you tons of free information as to how we can get to this. Uh, yeah, so Bismillah says good jobs. Thanks, Bismillah. Payal, our fantastic AJV client and her wonderful family who are in Auckland, uh, says, hello, everyone. Hope all well. Stay safe. Thank you so much, Payal. Same to you and your family. I hope you're all enjoying some good family bonding time. I'm absolutely having a great time bonding with my family. And, you know, it's great to wake up and have your entire family all around you. And, you know, I, I've worked from home for many, many years. So it's not dramatically different for me. But for me, it is absolutely great to wake up and to see my family all around me and to know that they are in a good safe environment like new zealand are all our uh, essential services are still working so if there's an emergency we can still call triple one and you know the police or the ambulance or the fire brigade will turn up so yeah it's all good uh, pile thank you so much uh, for checking on us i hope you and your family are also doing well take care Kia kaha, as we say which is stay strong and if you need anything at all, just pick up uh, your phone and call 0800-696-977, which is the line we've set up for uh, AJV clients. Uh, and so if you need any support at all from us during this, uh, you know, uh, challenging times, we are happy to help you. All right, cool. Ricardo Manan has asked me a question, no number, so I'll have to move it forward. Uh, uh, Ankit Bagella re replying to Ricardo. So I think Ricardo, you're getting uh, your answer from Ankit. Uh, uh, Ankit is one of our AGB students and uh, yeah, super smart guy. And uh, he, I've noticed he's, he likes to come on uh, our live shows and add his own uh, experiences and his and he does good research as well. And he's uh, answered your question, Ricardo, which is like, as long as uh, you were legally working and paying taxes before, you know, you would still be eligible for this subsidy. Thanks, Ankit, as always. Maybe at some stage I need to offer you a job in the company and you can start doing my live sessions, Ankit. Hope you're doing well in Wellington, my friend. Yeah. Rashid Mahmood, I'm living in Dubai currently and want to move to New Zealand with family for PhD and work. Hey, Rashid, uh, good aspiration. Uh, we, uh, we are uh, trying pretty hard to attract uh, PhD students uh, into New Zealand. Our researchers is another one of our... Uh, top uh, you know focus areas uh, because uh, as a country we want to uh, grow our soft power and research especially so absolutely again if you go to uh, my uh, youtube channel and search for phd course in new zealand there is a very clearly uh, made uh, video which talks about the advantages of doing a phd in new zealand thanks for sharing your number uh, have a look at that uh, video and then it explains all the different uh, advantages you will have working as, uh, sorry, uh, coming into New Zealand as a PhD student. And uh, yeah, we'll be happy to help you because you know, we love working with our uh, uh, high quality clients like you, Rashid. So have a look at that video. Thanks for sharing your number. One of our uh, advisors will also get in touch with you and we will take it forward from there. All right, thank you. Vibans asked me a question, uh, but he has not, uh, Shared his number, nor has he mentioned if he's an AJB client. I'm just gonna uh, go back to my team to check if they have uh, given me any further feedback. Hey, Eric, I have some feedback uh, about you from Grace uh, and also for Clayton uh, as well, Clayton guys. So apparently uh, the fee, uh, paying the fees was recommended by NMIT merely to avoid post AIP delays with immigration New Zealand. So that's the uh, confirmation that Grace gives me uh, in our team chat. And she says that, uh, paying, well, I'm just reading out what she's written here. She says, paying the fee was recommended by NMIT 
merely to avoid post AIP delays with immigration New Zealand. I think it sounds fair. It sounds logical because you know soon after immigration New Zealand opens up and you know as back to doing its uh, business as usual. I think there'll be a deluge of uh, applications and it's probably a good idea to, to kind of, you know, uh, but if you don't want to pay your fees uh, ahead, technically you don't have to pay till the AIP is issued. Uh, like I said, we will get a clarification from NMIT anyway. Okay, cool. Right, Srikant Krishnamurti, good day, AJV team. Hope everyone are staying safe in the challenging situation. I missed your live session last week. However, watch the recording later. A few interesting things to know from previous sessions are AJV team is expanding and planning to set off physical offices in New Zealand, India. That's correct, Srikant. Uh, AJV team structure beautifully explained that includes study advisors, team leads, etc. Thank you. Uh, positive feedback about Unitech is uplifting. Fantastic, uh, uh, Srikant. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I will uh, keep in touch with my study advisor, Mubarka, on my study plan and keep supporting the wonderful AJV and team. Hey, thank you, Srikant. That's such a beautifully uh, written uh, you know, message to all of us, uh, not just to me, but to everybody else uh, following this chat. Yeah, exactly. We are growing. I mean, I'll be honest. I mean, I'm slightly uh, a little frustrated that this whole bloody COVID-19 thing had to happen now because we were absolutely galloping along and you know we had these great plans to do this that that so it, it, it did put a little bit of uncertainty into uh who uh we are and what we were planning to do but i tell this to everybody including my team who is watching this i give you my word we are doing very well and there is no problems with agv in the sense of any layoffs and stuff like that i think we are super strong at this stage and i am super smart to be able to keep this thing going you know, worst case scenario. So yeah, I, I think uh, together we will get out of it. And you know, my experience and my, you know, just having lived a very, very long time tells me that this is just a cycle. It is going to go down and it's going to come up. So the world has seen, if you all remember the massive 2008 uh, crash in, uh, uh, in, the, in the US and, you know, they said, oh, economic disaster, the world is going to come to an end, da, 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 do, do, do. And today we, I mean, we don't even remember what happened in 2008. But I was watching a very interesting movie about it. Randomly, it was not because I was, you know, but it's a beautiful movie called The Big Shot. Uh, watch it if you guys can. And uh, I think it's slightly old, but it's, it beautifully explains that whole, you know, house mortgage uh, bubble and all that kind of stuff. But Srikant, thank you for staying positive. Continue to speak to Mubaraka and we would love to work with you. And I am looking forward to meeting you in New Zealand soon enough. All right. Cool. Hi, uh, Abhishek G says, hi, Arun, AJV member. I submitted my partnership visa last month. I know now it's COVID, but when can my application, when can my application start? Abhishek, they are at this moment uh, only prioritizing certain visas. Uh, and I think these visas are for uh, uh, people who are come under essential services or uh, who would help us here in New Zealand to fight COVID-19. So I think uh, at the rest of the visas, applications are all on hold at the moment and i know there is some staff working in inz uh, wellington uh, and i think uh, a lot of their other offices have been asked to work from home uh, and i think they're still kind of coming to grips with how uh, people can work from home because as, as you know immigration new zealand deals with a lot of sensitive information and uh, obviously they don't want it you know everywhere around uh, like in our know, home situation suddenly my wife is speaking over my shoulder and reading somebody else's files and all the stuff. So they are, uh, I'd say just hang in there, be patient. Uh, uh, we are into our second week of lockdown. I think two more weeks uh, of lockdown. I think there'll be so much more clarity and uh, I feel very positive. I feel very confident. I keep saying this. I'm not saying it because I'm in the business of helping people to come to New Zealand. I just feel confident and positive that New Zealand will fight this and come out stronger. So just hang in there, just be a bit patient, uh, Abhishek. And uh, you know, as soon as things come back to normal, uh, we should be able to be up and running and I'm sure you will. Yeah. Okay, Ankit Mittal uh, says, uh, hey, I'm waiting for my answer. I appreciate your thoughts. Hey team, did Ankit share his number or suggest uh, that he is one of our students? Uh, because Ankit, if you're still waiting for an answer, you've got to share your number, my friend, because the, those are the rules of the live sessions, Ankit. If you are an AJV student, uh, 
uh, you know, you will have to, uh, you know, tell us uh, uh, because like I keep saying, and I say it in plain English, this uh, these sessions are for AJV students like Srikant Krishnamurti, for O'Neill Pandit, for Payal Basu, you know, uh, and for uh, Eric and Clayton, all the people who came and said, identified and said, hey, look, I'm an AJV client and I want to hear it from Arun, who is the, you know, owner and senior licensed advisor of uh, uh, AJV. And so these sessions are meant for them. If you are not an AJV client and you want uh, me to give an answer, I will give you an answer. But all I'm saying is you gotta, guys got to share your number for us because hopefully then you will become an AJV client and then we'll have this beautiful friendship which will last for years to come. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Okay, okay. All right, there's somebody from Africa who says he wants to partner with uh, AJV. We will take a look at that. Uh, Babalola, yeah, okay, Babalola, we will take a look at that. Akshita asked something again, not an AJV student, so you'll have to forgive me if I move on, Akshita. Shrikant, the Smitha Patel. Uh... Right, because I didn't answer Smitha Patel's uh, query. So what Smitha did is I'm not your client, but I'm a friend of one of your clients, Payal Buzzer. Smitha, you still have to share your numbers with us. If you don't have to, if you don't want to share it in, on this public forum, you can inbox uh, it my uh, thing. Uh, but you know what? What the heck? I'll answer your question uh, because you, you've taken uh, Pyle's name and Pyle might feel upset that I'm not uh, <laughs> respecting her name enough. So you're saying I'm currently doing level eight postgraduate diploma in applied management, which is going to finish in July 2020. What is your advice for the surest pathway to, pathway to residency. The surest pathway to residency is that you will need to get a job that is relevant to the course that you have completed. That job needs to be uh, at a level, uh, which is uh, the right skill level in as per the ENSCO, which is the Australia New Zealand Standard Classification of Occupations. Plus it also needs to have the right uh, uh, level of salary. Uh, which is acceptable to immigration New Zealand, uh, not depending on the different bands they have created. Uh, and so that's really the, the trick is simple, uh, Smitha. You will have to find a relevant job, a job that is relevant to, to the course that you have completed uh, and also depends on various other factors like uh, what if you can find it outside Auckland because obviously you're going to get more points and da-da-da, all those kinds of things. So what I would suggest is, you know, although you're not one of our clients, uh, Pick up the phone and give us a call. Uh, call this number uh, during office times, so 0800 696977. That is our toll free number that we set up here in New Zealand. Give a call and you should be able to speak to my colleague, uh, Mary, uh, who is also you know, a very, very knowledgeable licensed immigration advisor. Have a chat with her. And, but pretty much, like I said, we can't do anything for you and about your residency dreams unless and until you actually find a, a, you know, a relevant job. and. Unfortunately, you're not one of our clients, but if you were one of our clients, we would have also helped you to network with a lot of our ex-students who are already uh, found good jobs in working in different organizations. And they have been very kind and generous in helping a lot of their fellow AJV students to find jobs, to references in their own company and so on and so forth. So all the best, Smitha. And uh, yeah, you know, I hope you do well. But uh, once you find a job, give us a call on 800 696 and we will see how best we can help you uh, about you going to your uh, residency trips. All right, guys, looks like uh, there's a time to do that. Ring my bell. One of my colleagues uh, who also does this live session says, send me a special request for a bell like that. So I'll have to now uh, look for it and uh, have, have, have it delivered. So anyhow, so that was it, I guess, for today. And uh, right. Okay, so Ankit, I'll have to answer Ankit's uh, uh, query because I just got uh, details from my uh, team that Ankit has actually 
uh, shared his CV with one of my colleagues called uh, Neha. So thanks for that, Ankit. See, look, uh, a deal is a deal. You know, once you uh, share your number, I'm more than happy uh, to, you know, uh, help you guys out with my answer. So Ankit's question was, hello, how can I get into New Zealand for work, have experience? Please guide me accordingly. I'm very much impressed with your presentation skills. So Ankit, I think I answered your question saying that to get a job directly in New Zealand is almost impossible. Uh, especially with these new changes that are going to occur after we open up for COVID-19. But because you shared your CV with Neha, we will uh, suggest. So, uh, and you know, some, sometimes people ask me, why do you always suggest this study and settle pathway? Because that is the only pathway that seems to be working right now for people like yourself, Ankit. You know, even if you have experience and good background, unless until you're present in the country here in New Zealand and uh, having a valid work visa, no employer is really going to, uh, you know, consider you very seriously. So. Which is why we suggest, hey, look, make an investment, come into the country, study for a year. And if you're doing it at a level eight, which is a postgraduate diploma or above, you will get a three years post study work visa, which is a fantastic opportunity for you. Because while you're studying, you're working part time and taking care of your living expenses. After you complete your course, you will get a three years uh, post study work visa if you're doing a level eight or nine or ten course. And that three years is more than enough for somebody like you, Ankit, who, who's got a good background and enough experience to be able to find a relevant job and then move into a residency and then work permanently in New Zealand. So that's why we recommend it because you've already shared your, uh, um, your CV with uh, Neha. She will give you a call, uh, talk to you, have a chat, you know, no obligations. We don't, just because we call and talk to you, it doesn't mean that you're now bound to us for the rest of your life and to somehow come to New Zealand. We understand it's not that easy, but you know, have a chat with us. We are good, honest, friendly, frank, uh, and professional uh, advisors. We'll give you our best advice. If you can make it happen, we would love to have work with you and make it happen. If you can't make it happen, so be it. Uh, stay happy wherever you are and just share our videos and our messages with the rest of your family and friends, all right? Okie dokie, end of my journey for today, this Monday, but look out for more live sessions from my colleagues, uh, Mary, Tulika, and Navya, uh, who will also uh, come live uh, sometime over this week. And uh, continue to share all these videos with your family and friends. And as always, big thank you and stay positive. As I told you, I feel very, very positive that this whole thing is going to blow away. Uh, I don't want to sound flippant about it, but I think New Zealand is working very, very hard on this. And once it blows away, I think we'll, we we remain continue to remain one of the most beautiful uh, countries on earth where you can find a feature. Just before I go, one last joke. Uh, joke not joke so much. Somebody sent me a meme uh, saying apparently God was spotted in uh, New Zealand. So this is one of those memes. I'm not picking up the stories. Uh, God was spotted in New Zealand and somebody asked uh, him, uh, or, you know, hey, what are you doing in New Zealand? Uh, so he said, well, I'm working from home. So I shall end it on that note. Okay, guys and girls, thanks for joining me. I shall catch you next week. Kia ora and good night. Bye-bye.